welcome to day 115 of my Monroe challenge. Today I'm walking route number 126, Stobban, the White Peak, Muluknang Korean, summit of the Corries. So we're getting there. I've only got 13 Monroes left to climb and then we've finished. Wow, so two today. Um, this is the extension of um, the Ring of Steel, which we did a couple of days ago. If you remember the weather was that bad, I didn't add these to it, but if it had been good weather, I would have probably added these, but hey ho. Um, let's get on with it. So we actually start the walk at, on the footpath I came off the Ring of Steel on, um, before we got to the road section at the end. Which is always a bit disconcerting, isn't it? That's the monster hill that we came down off of uh, the Ring of Steel. <laughs> I remember it being really steep. Um, we're well, obviously heading up this glen, following the burn. I'm going to follow it for quite a distance up to the uh, up to the Belak. How we stand? So you can't quite see Stobban yet. It's just hidden in that in that cloud. But look at the blue sky up there. I'm hoping the cloud will disappear shortly. But quick story. I only ever climbed three Munros prior to starting this challenge and I did climb Stobban about 32 years ago <laughs> and it was New Year and it was white with really heavy snow uh, so this was ever my first ever Munro yeah we're getting closer to uh, the Belak now things look like they're going to steepen up said the tops beyond in the cloud Stan's looking down on us wondering what on earth is taking me this long I have to say this is a fabulous path cutting up just a shame we can't see Stobham up there we're almost at the Belak and look the sun's just trying to poke its way through so uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we might get a view Oh, a fabulous view looking down there, uh, Glen Nevis. I can see the uh, path zigzagging off uh, from the Ring of Steel there. Can you can you see? You just about make it out. So uh, if you remember, I was going to come back off. Uh, that's the the last top of the Ring of Steel up there, and I was going to come back here and join these two to it a couple of days ago but uh, the weather was that bad I decided I won't get a view so it's just cleared Ben Chalak that's the last one on the Ring of Steel that's what it looks like <laughs> wow wow hopefully yeah stop panel clear when we uh, when we get up there we have got Stan up there looking down at us again I'm coming <laughs> so Ben Nevis is in cloud the ring of steel is about to be in cloud <laughs> and here we go stop ban is in cloud but you never know you never know we might be lucky by the time we get to the top i have to say it's quite rocky white rock similar to the other uh stop ban actually um there's a shale white shale path cutting its way up through everything so uh it's making life a lot easier than it could be so here we are stob ban munro 270 one dozen left wow that's something to celebrate i think unfortunately we're not celebrating the view so i'm dropping off the top um another shaley path uh to con which is good keeps you straight we've got a ridge to contend with we've got to drop about 150 meters and then we've got to climb over the top before we get to the next Monroe yeah even though it's uh, poor visibility uh, there's cairns keeping you straight and uh, and this uh, this shaley path can have help with the navigation it looks like we're at the bottom of the Belac here so that'll be the first top over there and it looks like we're just starting to get a bit of a view. Can you see it clearing? So the Monroe's going to be beyond. So that'll be the shoulder of the Monroe over there that you can see. There you go in the distance. 
Muluk Nan Korean. Wow. So we'll just go over this top and we'll follow the ridge round to it. I'm just looking across and uh, that's the Ben the ben over there, <laughs> uh, hidden in cloud. And uh, if you remember, we skirted down the side of the tourist track and you can just make out that locken where I turned off the track and cut back to the uh, North Face car park. Wow, look at that cloud inversion on the Ben. That's a better shot, isn't it? That is awesome. That's a better view over there, Muluk Nam Korean. So we're at this little top here. And now obviously we've got to skirt this ridge now. All the way, uh, all the way around. And we've nearly, nearly got a view of Stobban. <laughs> Very nearly. It might clear before uh, before too long. I keep getting this uh, cloud inversion on the on the bend. It's in and out of cloud, but uh, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? You can see the trig point at the top and everything. Awesome. Still can't see Stob Ban though. Wow, I think the clouds just disappearing off the top. Of Stob Ban. Just make out the uh, summit cairn. So this tops uh, 917 meters here. Not it's not a Munro, just a top. You can see there's hardly a drop to the uh, Munro, which is just covered in cloud at the minute, but it keeps clearing. Wow. Wow, a stub ban in the background. That's in and out of cloud at the minute. You can see how uh, undulating this ridge has been that we've walked along. So this is Stan dismantling the cairn at Muluk Nan Korean. <laughs> He's found a stick buried in it. <laughs> it's deceiving, isn't it? Now that top over there, it's not even a Munro, it's 910 metres, so it's like 30 metres lower than this one. And you would swear it was higher. It's mad, isn't it? So here we are, we're at the top. We'll follow the ridge round now, head down to the car. So that, that's the top over there. I'm just giving you a quick glimpse of the ridge that we've, uh, we've kind of navigated. Stobban is still in cloud, can you believe it? <laughs> this side of the hill is quite, uh, it's quite a lot rockier than the other, I have to say. There's a, quite a definite path, if you like, cutting its way through the the rock, which again makes uh, makes life a lot easier. What a great shot that is! So uh, we're just going to cut our way through these rocks, and then you'll see the track on the top of the grassy ridge going all the way down into the woods. Now I understand the wood is very very boggy, so we'll see. Just looking back up the rocky slopes we've come off of. That's the ridge, so the top's just hidden over there, but look at the uh, ridge we've walked around today. Right the way over there from Stobban. And over there is the Ring of Steel. That looks like the Ring of Steel will have had a good day today for weather. There's the Ben. So we're on this uh, less rocky path now. So uh, going should be uh, reasonably brisk, I would have thought. I'm just looking up at Stob Ban, just looking back. And uh, it's a very uh, impressive angular mountain. It's such a shame it's so wrapped in cloud, isn't it? And all the others around aren't. <laughs> wow, that was squelchy, <laughs> that last section. Very, very, very squelchy. Uh, we're at the woods now, the path the other side doesn't look too bad. So uh, hopefully that was the boggy section that the guidebooks had referred to earlier. So I've just dropped out of the forest and uh, I have to say the track through the forest. It's a kind of a felled forest that's regrowing. Uh, quite good track, you can see it's been, uh, it's been uh, worked on to make it good but it wasn't boggy at all so the boggy section was uh, just above the forest. And that one overly bad. So I'm going to follow this uh, forest lane, but now back to the uh, car park. That puts the descent from the Ring of Steel in perspective. Because up there, the scree is at the top, if you can see. 
and then it became a grassy, extremely steep path and it came straight the way down there. Very, very steep. Hi, welcome to day 115 of my Munro challenge. Today I walk route number 126. It's Saturday the 9th of July and I parked halfway up with Len Nevis in the, um, in the big car park. Um, absolutely fantastic day, fantastic track, pretty much all day actually. Um, you follow the track up the Glen, a very good track, and um, which follows the burn, and you pretty much follow it all the way up to the Belac. Um, the higher up you get, you get some fantastic views of uh, the Ring of Steel, you're looking across at Ben Nevis. Um, I'd like to say you're looking up at Stob Band, but I never actually got to see it properly. <laughs> um, it's just a really, really good path. It gains height at a really nice pace, nothing too, too ridiculously steep, it's just a good, a good path. Now at the Belac, you can actually uh, look across to the Ring of Steel and you can see the path zigzagging off of the Ring of Steel should you want to add these two to it. And it's all very doable, I think. But at the Belac, I turned right and I, the path then became uh, steeper and rockier and screer and the rock became very white. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the path was so good. I mean, it was like shaly and, and, it, and it zigzagged its way all the way up, avoiding any difficulty. And before you knew it, you're at the top of Stob Ban. Um, unfortunately, I was in cloud. So I, uh, I then started the, the ridge walk. So obviously you've got to drop off of Stob Ban. And again, really good path, zigzagging, through the various bits of scree and boulders, a uh, very shaly path on, onto the ridge. Now the ridge itself is really good. Again, nothing too difficult really. A couple of little scrambles, um, but, but a great path, a really good path. And it takes you over several tops, lots of undulations, until eventually you get to the last ascent of Bullock Na Karain. Um, which, which is uh, rather grassy actually um, compared to what you've been on so it's a very very grassy ascent until you get pretty much to the uh, the last the last throws of it where it becomes a little bit rockier but um, not, but not much really massive cairn and again some fabulous views you're looking right round the ridge that you've just walked you should be able to see stop ban on a clear day you're looking across at the Ben um, and the Ring of Steel, fabulous. Um, now, the path then follows a ridge and it does become rocky for quite some time and you follow, uh, you drop down a boulder field reasonably steeply. But again, this fabulous path zigzags through the boulders and a nice shaly path and makes life ever so easy. Um, now you follow this path all the way down past, um, along the side of some fencing at some point all the way down to the forest. Now, just before you get to the forest, it does become very boggy, um, squelchy. Uh, boggy is probably an exaggeration, but very, very squelchy. Um, but, but once you get into the forest, it's a fabulous track again. It zigzags around all the, uh, the new growing trees where, where, which have been planted um, since the forest has been felled. And, uh, and it drops down to a, a bigger forest track, which you follow right the way down to the road, which takes you to the car. Um, the good track makes, uh, makes it very, very easy navigation and consequently a reasonably fast day. Um, six hours, 3,717 feet of ascent and nine and a half miles.